Hi. This is a different sort of video. I thought I'd explain what's been going on and why I stopped doing videos a little while ago. Um, a lot of you who have watched me for a very long time, and again, thank you for the 22,000 subscribers. This is for you. Uh, I have macular dystrophy, so I've gone blind in my right eye. Um, I've got peripheral vision, but I've got no HD, you know, high definition, and when it comes to the screws, I can't bloody see them. What happened a little while ago was I started getting eye bleeds, um, and between that, I noticed I had a lump in my throat. Uh, end of May. I went to the doctors, um, and they said they'd put me for some blood tests, <clears throat> and they came back, um, the thyroid was okay. Um, it's, it's working, I don't know what thyroid even does, but anyway, I do now. <laughs> and they said to me that, um, we could put you for a specialist, okay, because there's a lump there. I went to a specialist, and they said definitely a lump, uh, 24 mil by 20 mil, and we need a biopsy, because um, I had a, an ultrasound on it anyway. Then I went for another biopsy and ultrasound, said possibly a U3, there's numbers for it, you can Google it all, U4, bad, U5, even worse, really bad. Uh, went for the biopsy and he said it's full of calcium, it's a hard lump, a bit unusual, and I could sort of detect then there was something wrong. But between that biopsy a week later, on the Friday, um, on the Thursday before that, I went to opticians about his eye bleeds, and he said I needed to go to hospital, um, to the specialist there, they phoned me on the Friday and said you need to go to A&E. Um, I didn't realise at the bottom of it, it said strokes or something, that wording I'll show you in the video. So I ended up in there back and forth for A&E into there and they're moaning. Mum had to go back and they ended up in the TIA clinic, uh, stroke clinic in Broomfield on the Tuesday. Um, so I'm in there, so that's now a week after my biopsy. I sat there with the old uh, doctor, called me in. And uh, got to do that. And she said to me, "Your results are back for your biopsy. And by the way, you got cancer." That, that took me back a bit. I must admit, I was like, "Well, because my nan died of cancer, my mum died of cancer, my sister got breast cancer." So, you know, I didn't get a what next. There was no one else there. You know, it did take me a little bit. And she said, um, "We need to get you a load of blood." So I had to take. Um, go straight to the blood and they took like seven water vials and I needed some other ones. The woman said to me, have you fasted? I said, I didn't even know I needed to. <laughs> and I've been taken aback a bit. So I had to do the worst thing in the world, was to tell the wife. That was difficult. Um, and then I had literally 12 days of nothing. So the following Wednesday, I started phoning the hospital because the wife said, give me some there. I left a couple of messages because no one answered the phone. Uh, Broomfield, and I phoned again on Friday, left more messages, no one answered the phone. So on a Saturday I thought, do you know what, I need to do something because I'm driving myself. I'm always in here, <laughs> I'm always doing something. So, <laughs> uh, waited the weekend, and Monday I thought, do you know what, I've had enough of the wife, I love her. I had enough of her moaning at me, so I'm going to phone continuously. And eventually I got put through to someone answered the phone, and then she said, well, you, you, we've gone, got your information, haven't forgot about you, and you've gone through the complication cancer team. And I'm like, that doesn't sound good. <laughs> it doesn't sound good. Um, they get in contact with you. Um, I rang all day on the Monday, got nothing. And the Tuesday morning, the woman rang me back again and said, we're going to get you in on the 5th of August. Um, today's the 2nd. Uh, we're going to get you in on the 5th of August and get you in there. Um, and that was the uh, Tuesday. I got a call later on the Tuesday saying, actually, Mark, um, we need you in tomorrow morning, 9 o'clock. Um, Surgeon is to see you. Um, and I'm thinking, bugger, you know? <laughs> so anyway, it was more so, I got there at nine in the morning and I got there after a half hour waiting and they explained to me that the nurse in the, or the doctor in the stroke clinic should never have told me that. You know, I've got Macmillan there, I've got the woman there explaining about my thyroid and where it is and what, I know what it does now. It's really low here. And she said that we're gonna have to operate. Um, we're getting in a couple of weeks. Um, they're gonna talk to you afterwards, Macmillan, and explain bits and bobs. And we'll go from there. I've got a papillary cancer, which means it is isolated into my thyroid. Um, they're going to have to cut me across here, under my lovely beard. That's why I'm going to grow it now. Glad I grew it. Um, and they are going to have, have to take it. They, when they open up, they see what's there, basically. That's going to come out. There's some nodules there that do your calcium as well. They have to come out. And it may affect my throat, as in my voice. 
Um, also, breathing and a man of a track, you know, you just don't know what they're going to find. So, worst case scenario, best case scenario, and afterwards, iodine tablets, a bit radioactive, and back on the road. But they had a go about this stroke. Um, I've got these GABA, whatever tablets they are, it used to be warfarin, but it's a synthetic. And they give me really bad headaches because I'm allergic to aspirin, so I thought they were. But they've sort of said to me as well that I mustn't cut myself or be near petrochemicals because I won't be able to fight it either. So that was annoying because I've got this and I want to play with it. Um, I've got spark, I've got fuel. I was just in ignition and Lou had a go at me again. So it looks like I won't be able to continue with this. I want to because I don't like things beating me. You know, the spark plugs in and now it's entirely called spark. It's just getting the fuel through and a few other bits and I'm going to redo these cables here. But um, I've been told off and obviously it makes sense. If I cut myself, I'm going to continue to bleed and if I get an infection. But I just thought I wanted to explain to you, you know, because some of you have been really supportive over the years. And I love a lot of you, to be honest with you. Uh, you're not just, my bike don't run, what is it? You know, I get a lot of them. And uh, question marks, we don't answer straight away. <laughs> but just a big thank you. A really, really big thank you. Um, and fingers crossed for the 5th of September, I've got to go for a pre op as well. Um, yeah, there could be a bad thing happen. I mean, it's obviously my throat. And uh, you've got to think about it. There's, there's risks in everything you do. But, um, but after the 5th of September, um, I've got to be in hospital a couple of days. And when I come home, I'll do an update for anybody that's thinking of me. And if you don't see an update, then, <laughs> you know, there's a saying that you only live once. You don't. You only die once. You live every day. Think about it. I am a cup half full person. I look at life to what you've got. And I'm not a victim. I'm not like that, you know. I've got my kids, my wife, my dog. I'm quite happy with you guys chatting. My garage to myself. But that's me. Okay, I thought I'd do it. Take care of yourselves on the road. Um, better get out here and get a cup of tea before the wife has a go at me. I have to get a new hobby. I'm doing chainsawing now. I've got a brand new chainsaw. 450 Rancher. X Talk. You know? Can't play with that. The wife even sees me and saying she's going to have a go at me. That's probably her now saying, put it back. Ah. Oh. There we go. It was hard saying goodbye. Take care of yourselves.